this is a CapMate microchip cap flap. I'm making this video because I couldn't find any others on YouTube uh, and I commonly use YouTube to look for ways on fixing things so I thought it would be useful to make this video just to talk about some of the common problems and how you can fix them. This is actually a neighbour's broken cap flap. I have actually identified the fault and worked out how to fix it so I'll be covering that as part of the video. In this video we'll be looking at several things. First of all a summary on how the device works. Then we'll be looking at programming the, the device just in case you've lost the user manual. Then we'll be looking at the various things that can go wrong. I shall put the timings in the description so you can skip the part of the video that you want to watch. So a summary on how this CapMate microchip cap flap works. First of all at the top under this cover there are four AA batteries. So they act as the power to the circuit board which is located underneath and to the motor at the bottom of the cap flap. So what is necessary in order for an animal to pass through this cap flap? First of all they need to have their microchip programmed into the circuit board and we'll cover that a little later in the video. Then what needs to happen is they actually need to push on the door because there's a magnet located just here and behind this fascia here there's a magnetic switch. This has to be pushed in this door by about a centimetre, two centimetres to activate the magnetic switch which then instructs the circuit board which is located under here to read the animal's chip. If it's stored in the memory of the circuit board then it will drop this plastic latch here with the motor to allow the animal to pass through. So on to programming the device. With the AA batteries inserted into the device, if you pull the cover up slightly, you'll see a P button just here. So it's what you need to do is you need to press and hold the P button until the solid red LED appears. So if we do that now, then you can see the solid red LED. Now on this card is actually a real PET microchip. So what you have to do with the animal is pass them through the door. Uh, and when the device recognises the chip, it will go to a flickering red, basically. The, the, the light here will flash. So we'll do that now. And as you can see, the light is flashing. You then press the P button once more. And that has now stored the chip. So probably the most common problem that you'll get with these is dirt has gotten into the mechanism at the bottom. So what needs to happen to open the door is that the magnetic switch needs to be activated, the cat's chip needs to be present that the device recognises, then it will power a motor at the bottom which will turn the plastic latch about a quarter turn now obviously if that mechanism is jammed up with mud, which is what happens over the years, that can obviously fail to turn the mechanism, which may mean the door does not open. Another possibility is that it may open the latch, but the latch may then stay open, jammed in an open position. So if you've got other unwelcome cats visiting your house, it may be because of that. So to actually fix those problems is just a matter of cleaning and this device thankfully is relatively easy to take apart. So assuming you've then taken this out of your door, if we turn the device over, in these recessed holes here, there's some very, very small Phillips screws. Uh, so you unscrew the four screws and then you can withdraw this cover. So when you've withdrawn the cover, now this bit's a little bit more tricky, uh, is what you need to do, there's a couple of tabs in there that you need to press in one there and one there, and there's a couple more tabs just around here, just in there, and equally on the other side. They need to be pressed in, and then from the front you can pull the mechanism off, so we've now recessed those tabs in, we can pull that off. 
and that reveals the mechanism. So where the dirt gets in is around this area here. So we can actually perform the action that the motor will perform. It drops this down like that and there's a little spring just to, just to push it back into place. Um, so it's just a question of taking this off and noting the spring position there and giving this whole area a good clean. Uh, and, and I have had this problem before uh, and that has resolved it. Uh, so that's quite a simple problem to resolve with no special tools needed, just a small screwdriver and some cleaning cloth. So coming on to the magnetic switch, uh, so to recap what needs to happen in order for the door to open, not only does an animal with the microchip programmed into this cat flap need to be present, uh, they also need to push the door open by about one to two centimeters uh, and the reason that is necessary is that there is a magnet located just here and a magnetic switch just underneath this cover here um, so when the door is pressed in by about a centimeter two centimeters that activates the magnetic switch uh, which tells the circuit board to try and read for an animal chip and if a recognized chip is present, it sends power to a motor under this cover here, which drops the plastic latch down, which is there. That then allows the door to open. Um, if we turn this uh, cat flap over, it's what you need to do. There are four recessed screws uh, that have been removed in this uh, cat flap uh, located in the recessed holes here. They're just small Phillips screws. If you remove those four, then you can withdraw this cover. Now we see the magnetic switch located just here. Uh, now in this particular example, it's connected at the top here to an intermediary circuit board, which is actually then wired into the two pins you see there. So I have seen a variant of the circuit board where that doesn't exist. There is one of these connectors just underneath here. Um, one thing to note, if you, for example, have already gone out and bought a replacement cat flap of the, of the same type uh, and you're just thinking, oh, I wonder if I can repair, repair the old one just to keep it as a spare. Uh, I have seen two different versions of this cat flap. Uh, one with the micro, this contact here, uh, which we'll look at, I have seen one example where the uh, this is a three pin plug uh, the wires are on the left hand side and one where the wires are on the right hand side of the three pin connector uh, and that's a bit bit canny by the manufacturer because if you for example take the switch out of your working cat flap and just insert it in here it's not going to work because the pins are located in a different location um, so in the next section of this video I'll look at how you can actually test this uh, magnetic switch uh, how you could uh, possibly test that this is the root cause of your issue without any special tools as well. So on to testing uh, the magnetic switch. If you have a multimeter to hand, uh, first of all we'll show you what should happen on a working switch. Uh, so I've got my multimeter co connected with a a replacement magnetic switch I purchased. Uh, I'll put a link in the description of the video. Uh, this is to replace the uh, faulty switch that we have in, in the cat flap. Uh, so uh, with the multimeter set to continuity mode, uh, what you need is just a magnet. Now when you present this in close enough proximity, we should hear a bleep to indicate that the circuit has been completed. So that is what should happen with a working magnetic switch. So on to testing the magnetic switch from the cat flap. If you have a multimeter, you need to put it into continuity mode. Then you need to put one end of the multimeter there and the other end at the other end of the switch there. Present a magnet uh, and if the switch is working, you'll hear a solid noise to indicate the circuit has been completed. 
So how do you rule out the magnetic switch as the source of your problem with no special tools? So uh, with the cover removed uh, and the magnetic switch removed, uh, what happens, there's two variants that I've seen of this cap flap, one where the magnetic switch connects into this intermediary connector here, and there's also one where this connector is present just underneath here on the circuit board. Um, so what we need to do is we just need to have something like a flat bladed screwdriver just to bridge the pins in this white connector. Uh, and if we do that, that will mimic the animal pressing their head against the door to activate the magnetic switch. So the only other thing we need then is the animal to be in fairly close proximity to the cap flap. And I appreciate that might be possibly the most difficult part of conducting this test. Uh, the animal doesn't have to be too close, probably a half a metre sufficient. Uh, and obviously with this removed from your door, you can obviously take it to them. Um, I have my test uh, animal uh, microchip here, so I can just leave it in the door there to mimic the cat being in close proximity. And then I can take my device to bridge the two pins. So if this is uh, the cause of your problem, you should hear the, uh, the, the motor drop the latch when bridging these two pins. which you can hear there. So that indicates in this particular cap flap that the source of the problem is the broken magnetic switch. So just to talk about the aerial in this cap flap, uh, I think having looked at the cap flap, uh, this broken one, it would be fairly unlikely for you to have a problem with the aerial. Uh, as all it is is just some wiring wrapped around the tunnel so obviously when the cat put it puts its head into the tunnel, it's got a reasonable chance of being able to read the, uh, the, the microchip. Um, if we turn the device over, again in these recessed holes of which there's four, there are some Phillips screws that you just need to undo uh, and that will allow you to uh, withdraw the cover. Uh, so the aerial on these devices is actually wrapped around uh, the outside, it's been taped on here right around the perimeter. Um, now, what may be possible, uh, and certainly what happens with mine, is that I do get an element of water ingress with this cap flap, uh, and it can work its way in between the two plastic covers and in. So what some people may do is, is drill a hole in this here as a, as a way to let water out. And now obviously if you do that in the wrong position, you're gonna cut through the aerial so I'd think that's the most likely cause of failure is by drilling through and obviously cutting the antenna. Uh, so the antenna is just, you can see, uh, two wires coming out here going into the circuit board. Uh, it would obviously be possible with a multimeter uh, to find the end of those connections and do a continuity test uh, just to see that the uh, antenna has continuity. Uh, it only appears to be a very, very thin wire. Uh, if you did happen to have a break in this, then uh, you could either un undo this electrician's tape, find the break, fix it, uh, even just by wrapping the two ends of the wires together, I just think in retaping this here, uh, or replacing the wire in its entirety, uh, which would be a little bit more involved. So coming on to the motor, now, I would have thought it very unlikely that the motor would fail in this device, uh, mainly because the motors uh, are rated for usually tens to hundreds of thousands of hours of use. Uh, and obviously, they just don't get very much uh, use in, in this device. Uh, but I, having said that, it's always possible. It's always something you may want to test. Uh, now, first and foremost, you've got to remove this cover uh, and again, there's uh, recessed uh, Phillips screws in these recessed holes here, four, which you just need to remove, and then you can remove this cover. Then we need to remove the bottom panel, uh, and there are four latches you need to recess in. So there's one there, one there, and then there's, there's, there's a latch either side of the top here. 
uh, press those in and you can gently remove the uh, the cover at the front here uh, like so uh, now the motor is located there uh, and obviously the wiring goes back up to the circuit board uh, so it is possible to uh, you know remove this motor uh, you could uh, for testing it some ideas would include uh, connecting a multimeter uh, activating the circuit and, and testing for voltage to the motor uh, I would have thought to be honest you most of the problems would come from dirt in this area uh, then of course you know the, these motors uh, you'd imagine you'd be able to get a replacement and solder that in uh, I believe they are five volt motors uh, but I'm not 100% sure on that uh, but as I said I think it would be highly unlikely for that to be your problem, uh, but it was worth just uh, just talking about it in this video.